Hi, I'm Summer. I go to Orchard Pike High School. I am going into ninth grade and I like to do cross country for fun. I'm uh, Dr. Michael Simpson. I'm uh, a psychiatrist and the behavioral health me medical director for Your Care Health Plan. Um, besides doing that, I uh, also uh, have experience treating uh, teenagers in my practice and uh, I have a, a son going into 10th grade and uh, have a lot of fun with uh, my English Bulldog. I'm Autumn Schweitzer and I go to Orchard Park High School and I'm going into 11th grade and I enjoy cheerleading. I'm Dr. Joe Stankitis. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Your Care Health Plan and my background is in internal medicine and I have five daughters who I have uh, lived through their growth from being little kids to grown women and have had a ball following them all over the world in terms of Various sports. One of the big challenges is that um, you know young people are going through a lot of changes, and you know you're first a kid, and now you're on your way to becoming a full-fledged young lady, woman, and the body changes. There's a lot of stuff happening outside, and in terms of other people, and you can be really stressed out. And having an opportunity to be able to talk to somebody, to share your feelings is really important. Your primary care physician or a nurse practitioner or someone trusted like that is really, I think, a helpful place to be able to bounce ideas off of and express your feelings. No one that would is discuss stays between you and that person, and that's huge. Mom doesn't find out about it, dad doesn't find out about it, principal in the school doesn't find out about it, nobody does. That's between you and them, and it's up to the kids to be able to pick who they want to talk to. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think it's nice because you get to talk to just like one or two people, and you get to keep it between just you two. It doesn't spread everywhere. and. You get to go see them like every year or twice a year. I, I agree. I think it's very important. I think uh, having a place you can go and talk to, and um, like Dr. Joe said, the privacy, being able to have it be confidential, and somebody who maybe is familiar to you but not part of your regular day-to-day -day life can be a nice uh, place to be able to go and talk to things. And also, a lot of uh, primary care physicians and nurse practitioners know more about what it's like to be, I think, a teen these days than often somebody's parents do. Because uh, things are changing, changing quickly. So yeah. um, they've talked about it, hopefully, with a lot of different uh, people of different ages and sort of have a sense of what things are like now. Yeah, I think it's nice to, like, to like, tell someone about what's going on to see if, like, you may not think something's normal, but they're there to, like, assure you that it is and it's completely fine like whatever you're feeling you're going through yeah well i mean i had my kids come to me and it's interesting what uh they find is really important to them and really bothering them uh it's good to know it's probably like affecting you because you feel like you have to like post something or you have to get like a certain amount of likes on something so like you want everyone to think you're perfect so there's a lot more pressure like for like physical appearance and things like that and i feel like when you go on like social media you look at all the posts and what people are saying and you like it makes you kind of want to be like them or i don't know i just like look at the pictures and i'm like it's like normal, like everyone looks different, so it doesn't really matter what they look like compared to me. So I don't really like think of myself different just because of what someone else looks like. Okay. Yeah, because we're all individuals, so we all grow up different ways. Um, they probably, like everyone probably thinks a little bit like, oh, I wish I was skinny or something like that. I wish I looked a little bit different, but yeah, I usually don't pay attention to things like that. Cool. Yeah, I usually stay away mostly from social media. I'm not really into it that much, but I know a lot of people look at it and post on it, and they like try to be certain ways because of what they see. Well, I think that with uh, both Summer 
And also odd on my hit on here was the fact that the social media is something that has grown in at times I think it's gotten out of control. And the way that young folks are feeling pressured and um, it's tough. I mean, it's bad enough that they're going through the changes of growing up as uh, both the body image and thinking and all that. But then when you get people pressing after you, and I mean, it's incredibly stressful and people can find themselves potentially making choices that they'll regret later on because of the spur of the moment or whatever. And that's what I think is a real challenge. I don't know whether you've seen that, Mike, but... Yeah, I, I think so. I think, um, you know, one thing that I think is different and changing is uh, just how much information there is and how quickly uh, it can be spread around. So I think uh, a lot of people, not just young people, but often younger people are uh, particularly good at the newer technologies and can get lots of good and high quality information, but sometimes too much information and also uh, you know, inaccurate information can spread really easily and really quickly. Um, and so it seems like it used to be You'd have certain ideas or things that people would be talking about or spreading around. They would last, you know, for years. And now it seems sort of like every week there's a different kind of set of information that people are getting. Um, and it can be good that you can see a lot of different people and people who are like you or people who are different from you. And it can help you feel sort of like, oh, okay, not everybody has to be this way. But also there can be sort of uh, people or voices or ideas that are become very dominant and can feel like this is the way I'm supposed to be and really not very accurate and uh, kind of give the sense that, oh, this is, everybody's doing this or that and it's not, uh, you know, always true and then a lot of people might not be comfortable putting out there uh, certain thoughts or ideas or things. Uh, one thing that can really happen is uh, if there isn't the communication, the not communicating is also a message often. So uh, when things that are really on um, any patient's mind uh, aren't being addressed, it can feel like, oh, I'm the only one who has this question or feels this way, or these topics aren't okay to talk about. Um, and that can really uh, send not the message that you want to. Um, and then of course, uh, where are people supposed to go? I think a, a thing that can be nice with primary care is that that's a regular thing to go to. So you're kind of expected to be, you know, go see your primary care doctor and a primary care doctor or provider can um, ask for you to come back to check on something and it can be a way that you can uh, have a conversation that uh, isn't obvious uh, always, sort of. It can be, can be more private and uh, kind of like, oh, okay, of course, you know, a parent says, oh, you're supposed to go to the doctor. It's easy to do. Um, and if that's not a place that you can have important conversations, it's a real loss uh, and might, might not be able to find another place to do that. The other thing is there's some schools in the Buffalo area, they have school-based health centers. So kids can go there during the day and actually have these conversations with a nurse practitioner or a, or a counselor and be able to bounce off, well, is this really true what I'm experiencing or not, and really get the full lowdown rather than being dependent upon what's out there floating around in the uh, in the netherworld. And, and it's really good, so you can do that and or see one of your, uh, your teachers, if there's someone that you really trust or a coach or someone like that, at least have a conversation and they can guide you to where you need to go to get your uh, questions answered or also your concerns addressed. So I think that's an opportunity that's out there. Probably like having someone else know that information besides yourself, that's probably one. Just like opening up to like somebody you like if you switch doctors or whatever, just like knowing somebody new that you open up to and like you're telling them personal things and it's just like a little different because you don't really know them that much. But you're telling them a lot of things about yourself. The best thing that they could probably do is act less formal, I guess. So you feel like you're, because it's easier to open up to someone on the same level as you than someone who's like above you, like more professional. Yeah.
Yeah, and like tell us more about like their home life or like if they had children or more of like what they do for fun. Tell us a little bit about them so we know we can like open up also. In my end, the thing is not be judgmental. I think the thing is, uh, I mean, and it's true not only for young people but for older folks too that come in with problems and the thing is, well maybe I personally might not have handled it that way, but the fact of the matter is this individual is now faced with this situation and how can we work together and make it come out to an optimal outcome and again, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, like we need to deal with each other as human beings one on one and that is, well, I'm the authority, and you don't know, that doesn't work. We have to be on the same page, so to speak. It can affect things in a number of ways. I mean, certainly, uh, uh, substance abuse can have direct kind of impact on sort of develop, developing brain and that kind of thing. But also just sort of while it's happening, um, people very often make decisions that they ordinarily wouldn't make. Uh, put you uh, potentially in risky situations um, where other people are also maybe not making decisions that, that they ordinarily would make. And then I think also it can add to making it more difficult to, to talk to other people about it because it starts to become, you're not just talking about one uncomfortable topic, but maybe several uh, all at once. Um, but I think, you know, unfortunately a lot of people uh, have a uh, number of early sexual experiences when drugs, including alcohol, are involved. Um, and also sometimes it's like, well, be, you want to be able to, you know, have your you know, early experiences in life be ones that you can re remember well and you feel clearly about and feel like something that you really did because you made a choice to, to do something and were in control of it and uh, not just have, have to be an accident. Um, probably like pressure from other kids mostly to do certain things. And, like some people do it already so they like want some people want to fit in with other people, and by doing that, they would do what they also do, like drugs or alcohol, to fit in with everybody. I feel like once you start like high school, it becomes more um, current, and like it happens more often. Um, they get in trouble a lot, or um, they just don't they're not seen as like a good person all around from like other kids and teachers I guess. It's nothing brand new. I lived through it, Michael lived through it, you two are now in the middle of it and our bodies change because we're no longer kids, we're now becoming young adults. So uh, yeah, hormonal changes, as uh, Dr. Simpson mentioned, the fact that uh, your mind's being developed too. I mean, there's a whole process uh, that goes on with it. It's a normal thing to go through, being a human being. But again, the thing is that you shouldn't feel that you're the only one in the world that's going through this. Other people are, other people have gone through it, and it's okay to talk about it. I think that's the key thing. If you're really concerned about something, feeling anxious about something, finding yourself where you've got people pressing on you, gee, you know, if you want to be one of the cool kids here, you got to do this and that. It's okay to talk to somebody to be able to express your feelings about it and then be able to figure out what it is that you need to do. Usually whatever you're experiencing is normal. Even though you might not think it is, it, it's totally normal. Well, I want young people to feel that they're not necessarily alone. If you're feeling alone, you got people out there, your parents, teachers, your doctor, counselors at school, whatever, and that will be willing to talk to you. Uh, again, you're the ones that will know who you'd like to talk to. Obviously, the, the teacher you don't connect with, you're not going to go to, but the thing is, um, like you've got to know that going to a physician or a nurse practitioner, what you discuss with them in the room stays in that room. They can't tell anybody else about what took place or anything like that. I think one thing that's important for uh, 
you know, providers to know is you often have, uh, can have very strong relationships with your patients and develop this sense that, well, I would just know or uh, because I have a good relationship, or even if you don't feel like you have a good relationship, but that you'd be able to, to tell if certain issues are going on and really uh, uh, um, experience and uh, the research has really shown that that's really not very true. That if you're not asking questions about, not screening for things like uh, substance use and sexual behaviors, you really miss a, a lot and uh, especially uh, miss the chance to uh, talk with people about what they're doing or not doing uh, early on before uh, potentially more significant uh, difficulties might start. So really asking, asking more than once, uh, every time you see people really giving the ch chance because uh, uh, people of any age will often say, no, I, that's not an issue or I don't have any questions about that. And really it might only be the third or fourth time you've asked them something that they actually come out and say, well, you know, actually. And then especially I think for teens, things change a lot. What was true uh, two weeks ago isn't necessarily true anymore. And so uh, I think it makes it especially important to, to always be asking and open to um, hearing from them.